All right, 2.1, determining average rate of change. The average rate of change is the change in the quantity represented by the dependent variable delta y divided by the corresponding change in the quantity represented by the independent variable delta x over an interval. Algebraically, the average rate of change for any function y equals f at x over an interval x1 and x2 can be determined by the same method used in grade 9 for slope. So what we're doing here is basically we're creating a we're, we're going to be creating a line where we can find the slope of that line. So let's look at some examples over here. Average rate of change is delta y over delta x. You may have learned it as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And finally, using function notation, it would look something like the third thing, third one here. All of these here represent the average rate of change. In other words, the slope formulas right here. This one is the one we most frequently use. These are formulas to use that. What I did is when I taught the grade nines, or when I teach grade nines, I look at them to determine the slope without memorizing a formula. So let's watch for a second. What I'm going to do is make that middle formula disappear. In order to determine a slope, we need two points. So let's say we have x1, y1, and x2, y2. x1, y1 being the first point, and x2, y2 being the second point. What does that mean for us? Let's look at that again. One second. Okay, so here we go. x1, y1, a point, and x2, y2 being another point. And we have a line that will connect those two points, and we have to determine the slope between those two points. So let's try that again. So a line that goes through those two points and determine the slope of those two points. How do we do that? Well, folks, we do the following. Watch. Write one of the points going upwards. Let's say the furthest, the uh, rightmost point, x2, y2. And we write the set, another point, x1, y1. Notice the way we wrote it. We wrote it upwards. And then we draw three lines, one to separate the y's, one to separate the y's and x's, and another one to separate the x's. What we've done here is generate the equation of the slope of a line. All right, then moving forwards. We use the average rate of change to determine the slope of the secant on a curve. A secant is basically a line on a curve. For example, a positive rate of change indicates an increase. So if we're looking here, let's just look at that diagram quickly. This line right here that you see here is a secant line. This secant line right here goes through two points on the curve. The, the two points that goes on the curve, this line goes through those two points that touch the curve. That's a secant line. Now positive rate of change, so positive slope, indicates there's an increase of that function. All right, next part. A negative rate of change indicates a decrease. For example, if we saw the other function, we have, uh, if we had drawn it on the other side, for example, let's look here. If I take this slope, sorry, this curve that I'm going to draw here, I'm going to take two points and draw a secant line going through two points on the curve. Notice that it's decreased. And notice that the slope of that line indicates that there's a decrease as well. All right, all linear relationships have a constant rate of change. Determining the average rate of change, that's what this symbol stands for, that's what we're going to use for short, AROC. Average rate of change over different intervals will yield the same result. Nonlinear relationships do not have a constant rate of change. Determining the average rate of change over different intervals will yield different results. 
What does this mean? Well, a line, this is what this is saying here, a line, will have a constant rate of change because it has the same slope anywhere across that line. A nonlinear relationship does not have a constant rate of change because it's a curve, and the curve changes as you change the secant line that you're trying to determine. So you have to be very careful there. Now, here's an example of a secant line here on a curve. P, here's the secant line right here, and this secant line passes through PQ, all right, and we're just going to look at the coordinates right now, 1, 1, and 2, 4. And what we're going to do is determine the slope of the secant line. All right, what do we do here? Well, we need to find the slope. Now, let's use the method that I use rather than trying to memorize a formula. The slope of a secant is delta y over delta x. A way to do it is to take one point and write it going upwards. There we go. Take the second point and write it going upwards. There we go. Draw three lines, one, two, three, and now you've now got the formula to find the slope, which is going to be three, three over one. Now let's say we had chosen different points. Let's do one, one first, going upwards, then two, four, then three lines, one, two, three, what does that yield us, folks? Well, it's negative 3 over negative 1, which, lo and behold, turns out to be 3. Interesting. So it doesn't matter which way you use the formula. The goal is to use the formula properly. So write the points going upwards and then three lines to separate them. All right, so example number two, and this was taken from page 71 in your textbook. And you're asked to calculate the average rate of change in volume for the following intervals. So, we need to look on the chart and highlight 30 and 60 and determine the average rate of change for, from 30 to 60. We do that using the points, writing them upwards, then subtracting them and we find out it's negative 500 over 3. What does that mean? It means that the vault, negative 500 over 30, which is negative 50 over 3, which means that our volume is changing by 50, liter, 50 liters every 3 minutes. That means the water is dropping, negative, dropping because it's negative right here. So we're looking at a negative 50 liters for every 3 minutes. And that's, we reduce this ratio. All right, let's look at the next one. 110 to 120, will that be the same? Logically, hopefully you're looking at this and saying, mm, I don't think it's going to be the same because this is not, a, this doesn't represent a straight line. So, let's do the average rate of change for 120 and 110, subtract them, and you have, it is dropping at this point, uh, one liter, Looking over here, it's dropping one liter for every minute. That's negative 10 over 10. Okay. All right. So, let's look at the next question. Part B. Why is the rate of change in volume negative during each of these time intervals? And the reason it would be negative, if you look at it, what is this function doing as we move from left to right? Hopefully, you're seeing by the finger that this function is decreasing as we move from left to right. So the volume in this function is decreasing every minute. So the volume is decreasing as we move from left to right. All right, part C. Does the hot tub drain at a constant rate? And explain, well, looking here, looking at the intervals that we used, the water is not dra draining at a constant rate because the table or graph represents a nonlinear relationship that is decreasing. So let's look at here. If we look at each of these points and draw a secant for each of these points, let's look at the first one. Draw that secant. Then we're going to draw another secant right there and another one again. 
you can see that the magnitude of these slopes is going to be different. The slopes of the black and red secant lines have a greater magnitude, absolute value of a quantity, than the slopes of the yellow and green secant lines. So what you're going to see here is that the slopes of these will be significant, meaning that the slope of this will be greater than the slope of this, and the slope of this will be greater than the slope of this one, and finally the slope of this will be the greater than the slope of this. So overall, the whole item, the slopes are changing and decreasing as we move further and further along the graph. So, example number three, calculate the average rate of change for the function g of x is equal to some sort of function over each interval. So we find the first one between 2 and 3. What will the slope be for that? Well, the average rate of change is going to be, and you plug it in, and what you end up getting is 3. So, let's do that again. Let's see that again just so that we can see that. Okay, so we found that the slope is 3 for this. What does that mean? It means that the average rate of change for this value is actually 3. Alright, alright, now let's look at the next one. That's part A. So, average rate of change now for part B is between 2 and 2.5. So let's calculate that average rate of change. The average rate of change is going to be, once we plug it all in, we're going to get a value of 2. Okay? Let's look at that. Sorry about that, folks. Let's look at the first one. And this one will result in a value of 2. So that average rate of change is 2. The first one between 2 and 3 was 3. Now between 2 and 2.5 is 2. So we're noticing as we get smaller, this number is actually getting smaller. Let's look at part C. Part C is between 2 and 2.1. What will the average rate of change be for that one? And we plug it in, and we find out that the average rate of change for this one is 1.2. So it's even smaller than the last one, and we've definitely decreased the interval. Let's look at the last one, part D. Between 2 and 2.001, the average rate of change is going to be, magic number, let's plug it all in. So what we want is the values between, let's do that again, the values between 2 and 2.001. What values do we need to find out for this one? Okay, so this is the last one, the average rate of change for this when we plug in 2.001 minus 2. Uh, using the average rate of change, we find the values 1.002. All right, that's the end of the video, folks. That's the end of 2.1. Take care.